Hey friends, you have asked and today I am answering. You wanted some updates on our most popular flower beds, so come on and let's see how they're doing. with Creekside. I am Jenny and today I am going to tell, take you through two of our most popular flower beds that we have planted and show you how they are doing. The one that I am standing at right now is a flower bed that we planted last year in July in North Carolina in all the heat and humidity. Not something that I'd really recommend you do but you know what we had some free time and so we did it. It was a bit of a struggle last year, but this year it was so worth it. We still have all of the shrubs that we put in last year. They are thriving this year and loving life. Um, and so I'll walk you through that. But our annuals this year, we switched them up a little bit. Last year we did Bordeaux Supertunia. Now I have the Supertunia Vista Paradise. And if you're not familiar with Paradise, this color on, on this petunia is so electric. It actually glows during the day. It is amazing. Whether we're sitting on the front porch, we're driving in, the color on this petunia is absolutely fantastic. The hack that I did to get these massive Supertunias was one that I shared with you in an earlier video. I planted hanging baskets. Took the hanging basket, the plants out of the actual basket, dug a hole and planted it in here. Now, I will tell you if you remember that this bed does have irrigation because it gets full hot, hot sun. And if we did not have irrigation here, there is absolutely no way that these petunias would look like this. So just know that all throughout this bed, there is our brown tubing drip system that waters this. Right now, I ha I've, it's been watering once a day. I've just bumped it up to do it two times a day. Early, early morning before the sun even comes up and then about mid-afternoon because it does get the blazing hot sun. So there is drip tape all through here. We added the double pink knockout roses. We actually got these for a customer and they were so gorgeous that I grabbed three of them. We have two on this side and then down on the end we have another one. So we added the knockout roses. I brought back the lovely purple fountain grass. It is an annual for us. We are of course a 7B here in North Carolina so this is an annual. I don't care because they're so pretty so I replant them every year. Do they come in that triangle so they'll get nice and big. Just make a big statement here. All throughout the back is the Brandywine Ver... <laughs> what is it? Viburnum. <laughs> oh, it has been a day and the heat is getting to me. Yes, yeah, so Brandywine Viburnum. You can see that they have their little... They do on flowers in the early spring and they are these beautiful white delicate flowers. They, the flowers are gone, but what they're doing now is they're putting on their little berries. So Brandywine will do these gorgeous berries in the fall that are perfect for birds and other wildlife to eat. So I am really happy with how these Brandywines are doing. So we've got those. We have the Encore Azaleas, so the reblooming Azaleas, spring and fall. If you can see how their little bright tips they have put on tons of new growth. They are very happy plants. So there's three of those guys. Then I did bring back the Gumfrina. Last year we had Gumfrina. It was a great success. So we were doing it again. Now you might say, Jenny, that, that is an interesting way that you planted that Gumfrina, like your pattern. Well, you know what? I learned last year that this Gumfrina does need to be on the irrigation and that tape drip tube it is spaced about every 12 inches apart. So I know it's a little odd looking right now, but as the summer progresses, it's gonna get filled in and you're not gonna see the individual plant. It'll be one big mass. 
So where I have planted the gumfrina is right below a little dripper. So they are guaranteed to get water every single time that the irrigation is turned on. Now this is something really interesting. Gumfrina for us is not a perennial. It is most definitely an annual because it loves it hot. To give you an idea of how hot this bed is and how mild our winter was last year, do you see these two sweet little gumfrinas right here? These little petite ones? Those came back. Those were last year's. Even though I ripped the gumfrina out of the ground, evidently I didn't get all the root. So I have one here and I have one here that have come back. So what? who would have thunk it? Interesting. You might see some little bit of um, brown grass-like. They're not weeds. These are my daylily, not my daylilies, my daffodils that are in the ground, the jonquils that were blooming. So you leave that until the foliage turns completely brown because that's how they um, get all their food and energy to form their flowers for next year. So I do have a little bit of brown foliage in the bed, but that'll soon be gone. I'm not worried about that a little bit. And then the last thing we have here are three beautiful crepe myrtle shrubs. Believe this is part of the barista series. And I want to say it's cafe mocha. Sounds good. If it's not, we'll, we'll flip it up there, the right one. But I love these crepe myrtle shrubs because they truly are a shrub. They are not going to be a tree. Three by fours. They are doing great. Beautiful foliage on them. Go to those hot pink blooms just like they did last year. Um, really low maintenance. So this is the driveway bed in all of her glory. She is doing fantastic. Could not be happier with how these petunias are going, how they're growing. They do get fertilized about once every seven to 10 days. So I'm very vigilant on fertilizing the petunias and the gumfrinas so they just keep putting on those blooms and blooms because remember food equals flowers. Now let's go check out the Supertunia Bordeaux bed. Here we are at the beautiful Bordeaux flower bed. This if you will remember is right off of our front porch. This is a little nook of our front porch and our bathroom makes this perfect shaped bed. It's about a 15 by 15 foot bed. Look at how great they're doing. Are they not gorgeous? You will remember back in the spring, I walked you through how I planted this bed. Of course, I have my sweet tea olive trees in the back. Those are my evergreens. They stay there. They're great. They'll grow up, give us a little bit more privacy for that bathroom window. But then in front, these are all going to be annuals. So I've got the Diamond Mountain Euphorbia in the back. They are spaced about every 10, 10 inches apart. They're growing. They're about to touch each other if they're not already touching each other. They will grow to be about two feet tall and wide and just be this huge hedge of white blooms in the back. In the center, the graceful grasses, vertigo grass. Can you really tell the difference in how big it is? It's nice and fat and wide and is going to be nice and tall and gorgeous. Just to give you a little bit of a perspective here of how big this grass is. There we go. So she is going to be nice and big. Remember vertigo will get to be about anywhere from four to eight feet tall. So huge. Then in front of vertigo we have Bordeaux. Bordeaux, I just could not be happier with the blooms on this plant. It is gorgeous. I planted these as one gallon containers. I watered them in, but we have gotten great consistent rain. So I have not had to do a lot of watering and they've been fertilized once. When I planted them, I did add the slow release fertilizer to all of these, um, but I have only done the liquid fertilizer on the Bordeaux one time and that was a week ago. So they responded gorgeously to that and I will continue to do that every seven to ten days. Then in the front, remember we talked about this when I planted the bed about this lemon coral sedum. Lemon coral sedum for us because we are a zone 7b is technically a perennial. This was planted last spring. It overwintered, it was still green, it was doing well 
and I told you in that video I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, if it was going to stay, or what have you. Well, it bloomed, which is interesting for a sedum, but it did these little tall, not little, I guess they are a little first, tall spikes of bright yellow blooms. For me, that's not the most attractive thing, but they are kind of done now and the, the foliage is really coming back and very vibrant. So probably what I'm gonna do is get out here with my little scissors or clippers, trim it back, fertilize it so it flushes back out, and then I will keep this lemon coral sedum here at least for this year. But this bed is absolutely gorgeous. I am thrilled with how it is developing. It's gonna continue to grow every day, every time it rains, every time we get nice warm weather, it's just gonna grow right before our very eyes. So stay tuned. I know we will do another update later on in the summer to show you how it has developed, but I hope you have enjoyed this little update tour of these two flower beds. If you have any questions or comments, please stick them down below and I will be sure to answer them. Make sure you like this video if you are not already a subscriber to Gardening with Creekside. Please make sure you do that. Welcome to the Gardening with Creekside family. Hope you have had a great day. Hope you have learned something and been inspired. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye friends.